Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Teamworks. I hope you've enjoyed your experience so far. I'm sure you've seen a lot of growth in your kids. And don't forget it's spring fever, so at this time of the year, they're a little squirrely. Um, but anyway, it's all in good fun. Uh, and I also hope you're making some great connections or are able to start tackling some of the deeper, more meaningful uh, topics of our curriculum, i.e. today's. So again, you're in that community service phase of our curriculum, um, you know, and it's about building empathy and really getting the kids to think of others' feelings, be more compassionate and kind, um, you know, that empathy for others, etc. So, you know, we're tackling something very serious, something really relevant to the kids, and that is in light of all the statistics um, and the growing focus on bullying, that's exactly what we're doing with our kids. They're actually going to do an anti-bullying campaign, all right? So really think about that. This is an anti-bullying campaign, but it's a community service kind of based project. Um, and with that, you know, we're really trying to build that empathy, as I said, because these kids one day are going to be our future volunteers. They're going to be our future mentors, just like you sitting right now at your computer screen looking at me. Uh, but one day, hopefully, they'll be, you know, future mentors or philanthropists. They're our next generation of people who are going to care and change the world. And that's why, you know, these community service projects, even this bullying campaign, is a step towards that. We're really trying to build this empathy and compassion with our kids, all right? So again, we're tackling the bullying. So before we even get started, we want to talk about reasons kids get bullied. So think about it. So I'm gonna cover up the little chart here. Why do you think kids get bullied? And some of you may have been victims of bullying, or some of you may have been a bully. And that's okay, all right? No judgment. There are things that happen in our development. But here's some reason why kids get bullied. Physical, because they have physical mental handicaps. Maybe they're highly gifted. They're those smart little kids. Uh, maybe they're a member of a certain ethnic group, and maybe this school is one, more one ethnic group than it is another. So maybe they're targets of bullying for that reason. Maybe it's their weight and obesity. Uh, maybe it's their uh, sexual orientation, gay or lesbian. Or maybe they're just those passive or source, uh, socially withdrawn kids, so they become easier targets. So just wanted you guys to think about that. Why our kids get bullied? Um, just to get you in that mindset. Additionally, I wanted to give you uh, a little bit of research, some statistics. 70% um, of middle school and high school students experience bullying at one time, 70%. That's a lot. Um, and as well with the internet net these days, I'm sure the kids are even getting bullied online. Um, Eight-year-olds to 15-year-olds rank bullying as their number one concern. It's their number one concern. Um, so um, that's pretty eye-opening. 27% have been harassed for not conforming to some sort of sexual behavior. And gentlemen, for those of you on the other side of this camera, you probably know about that. As little boys, they, you know, we get peer pressure um, into sex. And now I hear our young ladies are being pressured just as much. And then fifth to 12th graders are concerned about um, that social cruelty and, you know, maltreatment. So um, that's pretty eye-opening, as well as um, peer harassment is designated as a public health concern by the American Medical Association. So as you, as you see, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of information out there. There's a, a big spotlight on bullying, all right? So I wanted to give you that bit of information um, just to give you that context. And also think about this, and if I have any educator, educators watching, you know this bullying also has an effect in the classroom. Uh, we get those smart kids who don't want to raise their hands. We get kids who get so emotionally caught up in this. Maybe they don't want to come to school. Um, or they're just, you know, being a victim of bullying and um, they just can't focus, all right? They're distracted because they're fearful. So it has an effect on their academics. So there is a great impact on bullying and what it does to our kids, especially in middle school. So think about that. All right, so we're going to do a little energizer so we can get them thinking about it. And I just want you to know the kids might take it lightly at first, but I got to tell you, we've done this anti-bullying campaign before. The schools love it, the teachers love it, and at some point, you know, once the kids get warmed in, into it, the kids love it. And our mentors who have done these anti-bullying campaigns, they love it as well. They feel like they've had some of the most meaningful, deepest conversation with our kids. But it starts off as jokey funny, and then it gets a little more serious, so I wanted to make you aware of that. All right, our energizer is called From Ridicule to Rage. From Ridicule to Rage, and it's pretty simple. You're going to split your team up into three groups. You're going to distribute this little handout that says Stomp Out Bullying, and it's got a little scale on it. Here's a bigger size of it. 
and it's got an arrow. And going straight to the top are extreme behaviors, in the middle are those middle of the road behaviors, and at the bottom are the behaviors that are, that are, that are least fretful. Um, so it's a scale going from extreme to least. While they're in these groups, you're going to distribute, as I said, one of these to each of the kids in the group. All right, and then what you're going to have them do is, um, in their groups, rank these behaviors. So here to the left of our arrow, we have some behaviors like pushing or slapping, name calling, teasing, um, eye rolling, um, putting root stickers on people's backs, etc. And then they're going to rank it from you know the most extreme down to the least extreme in their subgroups. When they are done, um, maybe you can identify a child on your team who's a bit artistic and creative. Give them this little project of recreating. Uh, the image on the handout because then when you're done you'll bring your groups together and then we're going to talk as a larger group. Also, if there's some behaviors that are not noted on the scale, let the kids also share those as well and rank them accordingly. So once everyone's brought back together, we're going to have this great group discussion. You're going to ask everyone shit to share and then mentors, choose one of your mentors and then they can start asking the kids, you know, you know what did they choose? Which were the more extreme behaviors? The more of the middle of the road, the somewhat, and the least, and you just write them down and you have a great discussion about that. And then you can follow up with that, um, are all of these acts really violent? What makes one more violent than another? Et cetera, et cetera. So even on your handout, we've got some, some wrap-up questions, some reflection questions um, for this energizer, all right? So that energizer is to get the ball rolling. Our next activity is actually our main activity. And the main activity is choosing my own actions. Choosing my own actions. Again, we can break them up into different groups if you like, or you can keep them in the same group. In those groups, you then are going to you're going to have a bag with some strips of paper in it, and in there, in there are different scenarios. So you're going to tell your kids, okay, guys. Pretend you're the counselor at the school, and if it's not the counselor at the school, maybe you tell them to pretend that they're the dean or the assistant principal or the principal. And the whole point is that they're going to role play. They're going to take on this persona. So in these groups, they'll pull a scenario, and we have different scenarios. For example, you overheard a bully threaten another student several times during the day. Or two girls wrote a song with bad lyrics about another girl, and they plan on circulating the lyrics around the school. So let's say they pull one of those scenarios in their groups, you're going to give them about 20 minutes to come up with a solution, a recommendation. So don't let them get away with it's as easy as, oh, we're going to expel or we're going to call the parents. Get them to really think about, to really be thoughtful about how or what's the best solution for resolving this scenario. Whether it's the girls circulating lyrics and pulling them in individually so you can get each of their point of views and then bring them together and have them talk together. Is it about bringing this other girl and asking her what's going on? Or was there a, a situation prior that led these two girls to wanting to write these negative lyrics, et cetera? Do we need to call the family? Do we need to involve anyone else? But get them to really think about and give a more detailed solution for these scenarios. And that's it at the end of the day. That's you choosing my own actions. So don't forget, you've got your energizer with the scale and ranking. You've got your main activity where they act as guidance counselors or the dean of the school or whatnot, and they're coming up with solutions. Um, and that's how we're going to get this anti-bullying campaign going. Next week, they're actually going to really take charge, and they're going to post posters. They're going to identify the hot zones in the schools. They're going to try to get the whole school to pledge to stop by bullying, etc. But this is the precursor. This is the warmer to get them thinking about it. And as I said to you, mentors, um, our mentors who've done this before, they love this activity and the kids love this activity. You'll also have an opportunity to pass out a handout um, that tells them there are some tips if you're being bullied. And I also recommend that you talk to your teachers or the school coordinator at the school to know what is the school's policy so that you can help reinforce the policy of the school. All right, don't forget your question of the day. If you had a chance to sit down with your school's number one bully, knowing you will be safe, what would you say? Um, boy, I had a couple bullies. I have a lot to say. But anyway, in closing, here's, again, I like to end with a quote. Never be bullied into si in silence. Never be bullied into silence or accept one's definition of your life. Be confident and define yourself. And this is Will, signing out.